That guy right there, he's the ticket to the big fish. And, uh, you know, to catch big fish, you really don't need too much. I know a lot of guys uh, make a big deal about having the latest and greatest gear and having, uh, you know, all the fancy stuff. But really, fishing can be simple, right? And that's what this video is about today, going really simple. So I have a six and a half foot trout rod that I got for literally $5 on sale at Big Five. Somebody stole the reel, so they had to sell the rod by itself. It was only five bucks. I couldn't say no. Great little backup rod that I always keep in my truck. And this is a free reel that Pista Fun sent me. This is their uh, Viper slash Venom reel. So I actually don't like this reel. Still works. Not even gonna bother making a review. Uh, but I just wanna show you that cheap gear can catch fish. And you don't even need terminal tackle to do it. This is just bare six pound mono. That's right, I'm using six pound mono. At I'm gonna tie a dropper loop uh, with a perfection knot at the end of the uh, main line as my uh, weight attachment point. So I just wanna show that you don't need, you know, barrel swivels, you don't even need quick clips. Uh, if you know the right knots, and if you have a sand crab net, um, that's what we're gonna be using for bait today, you can actually put yourself on fish with super, super simple setups. To tie a perfection loop, it's really easy. It's one of the top five knots I think every angler should know. This is six pound motto, and this is against, uh, you know, a very gray background. So apologies if you can't see it. Just Google how to tie perfection loop it's pretty easy but basically you're gonna take the tag end of the main line and go back on itself one time you're gonna take that tag go back on itself a second time right and we're gonna find that tag we're gonna make sure that both loops are kind of laid in alignment then we're gonna take that tag end pass it through the middle run our finger grab that second loop and pull it through the first loop and if done correctly, that knot right there won't slide around. And again, what we're doing is we're tying a dropper loop setup. So from the bottom of my main line, I'm gonna go up about 12 to 18 inches, somewhere around here. And I'm essentially uh, tying, you know, if you're a bass angler, a largemouth bass angler, you know what drop shotting is. This is basically a drop shot setup. So I'm gonna be tying a dropper loop knot. And it's gonna be pretty long because I want a nice flowy presentation, um, you know, for that sand crab. That's what we're gonna be using as a bait. So I'm gonna take, um, you know, a piece of the leader line. You know, again, we're about 12 to 18 inches off the bottom there from that um, perfection loop. We're gonna turn it in on itself and we're gonna make you know, a, a circle that's probably like five to six inches in diameter, okay? So I'm gonna pinch the main line here and I'm gonna twist it a few times. You know, it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be a ton of times, maybe like four or five times, something like that. And you know, we're just perch fishing. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so you'll notice I've twisted the line in on itself. I have this opening here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the bottom of that loop through the opening and off camera I'm going to, with my teeth, gently hold the end of the loop and pull it through. Okay. There you go. And we're going to loosely let that knot kind of set it up. We're going to put some saliva on that knot right there. And we're gonna tie it tight. Boom. There we have our big dropper loop. Now a lot of uh, terminal tackle, a lot of pre-bought rigs come pre-assembled in all kinds of different ways, but this is the easiest way to do it. With this setup, you can attach really any hook. Now I'm using pretty small hooks today because uh, that's what I have. A lot of guys don't like to use anything less than like a size two or two watt. Um, you know, hook uh, out here because they want to keep the little perch off, but I'm going small just because I want to show uh, what light tackle can do out here. So I've got my dropper loop. We just need to attach a hook and a weight. Let's do that. All right, so I've got my size six bait holder hook. Really simple hook. I think it was a cheap Eagle Claw one uh, that I just took off a pre-tied snell rig, right? So I have my hook. I'm gonna pass the loop through the end here like that. I'm gonna twist it and send that hook right through the loop. And I'm gonna pull it tight, boom. Didn't need to snell it, didn't need to tie, uh, you know, any terminal tackle. This is all line, the hook, and last but not least, the weight. So again, just like the hook, we're gonna find our perfection loop. The end of it, we're gonna send it through the eye of the weight. Just super simple fishing right here. Pass it through once maybe one twist, 
send it through. This is a one and a half ounce coin weight, and that's my preferred weight when fishing out here. Now that we've got our rig set up, let's go get some bait, and we'll show you where the sand crabs are. It's really easy to find sand crabs. If you're looking, especially in low light conditions, if you're looking at a distance left or right, look at an angle, get low, and you can see their little antenna. As the waves recede, they create like a little V pattern in the wake. They each leave their own little wake trail, and that's where you know they're at. This is a homemade sand crab rake. I use an old broomstick, some old chicken wire, and uh, put it all together. Pretty, pretty simple setup. You know, fishing doesn't have to be expensive, doesn't have to be fancy, it just has to be fun. So as that first set comes in, what I'm gonna do is take my sand crab rake, put it down, and kick up the sand. And hopefully, Woo. beautiful. All right. There you go, that's a good one. That's the one we want. All right, we got what we came for. A shaw shell sand crab. Again, these are like jelly bellies and they stick out visually. And uh, you know, when you're looking at a bunch of other hard shells and when you squeeze them, they're a lot like big soft jelly beans. So we're gonna hook this, rig it up, throw it in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the point of that hook. This is the guy's head right here, right? This is a pretty big sand crab for this hook. So let's make it work. If you didn't know, surf perch have crush plates in the back of their mouths, and that's how they feed. They pick up all the vertebrates and all the invertebrates out of the sand or out of the water column as the waves are churning them up out of the sand, and they crush them before they consume them. That's why soft shells are the preferred bait, because instead of just crushing and spitting, they crush and swallow. So, you know, it makes for a more uh, predictive and uh, almost automatic hook set. So what I'm gonna do is stick the point through the sand crab once, send them down the line, and to the best of my abilities, send that hook point back out through the back. So I'm passing through the sand crab twice, and hopefully it's just enough to catch a perch. All we gotta do is cast it, catch a fish, let's do it. Oh, one thing to note too, a lot of these sand crabs have eggs, and the eggs are like perch candy. So see that egg pocket there? I wanna take the tail of the sand crab remove it to expose those eggs, and look where that hook point is, right where those eggs are. So, wouldn't be surprised if we can put a perch on in the first cast, let's do it. Now when you're casting, you're using soft shells, they'll fly right off the hook if you overcast. And you really don't have to cast far anyway, because the actual, you know, feeding zone, the strike zone, is after like this first little wave break. And we're in a little hole here, so it makes no sense to cast it super far. They're having breakfast, and we want to serve it up to them right on their plate. That's it. I only casted about 10, 15 yards in front of me where that first uh, wave, that white kind of wave break is. One and a half ounce coin weight. We're just gonna let it sit. We're gonna let that bait just naturally flow and move around because of that long dropper loop. We have a nice kind of natural presentation. We got a fish on already. First cast. Tenor drag a little bit. Again, simple gear. No terminal tackle, no quick links, no barrel swivels. Nothing pre-tied. Tied everything for you. Tied it all myself with two knots. If you're having problems catching perch and you're being cheap, or you're cheap, or you just don't have a lot of funds for fishing, this is all you need. Simple dropper hook six foot rod, six pound line, size six hook. That's all you need. Size six hook, look at that. That's a perch for the dinner plate, right? Not too bad. First cast, first little soft shell that I found, rigged it up right in front of the egg sack, exposed the eggs, it's like candy. This is the perfect time too. Morning, overcast, incoming tide. This is when the perch, you know, they're hungry because they've been sitting out waiting for the next incoming tide and uh, they're gonna nail you. First one, let's go get another one. Oh, 
So you notice all I did was gill it, gut it, scale it, and I think this is a male because of this uh, protrusion here on the little fin here. So pan fried, just salt and peppered. We're gonna fry one side, fry the other, serve with some rice, and be done. That easy.